its compassion and a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I see. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior. And move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine the light and let the whole world see. Singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine the light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory. Of the risen King, Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Let's pray. Father, marami pong salamat sa muling pagkakataon na kami po ay muli magsa-celebrate ng iyong kabutihan at kadakilaan sa aming buhay. Pagpalain niyo po ang bawat isang nanonood at sumasamba sa iyo sa mga oras na ito. Bless GCF Montalban, Lord. Preserve and protect your church. Bless each member and their families. Provide every need, Lord, and protect us from all harms and sicknesses. May we stay strong in our faith, O God, 
till the end. Bless our country, Philippines. Take control in our present situation. Loobin mo po mag-end na po itong pandemic at mahinto na po ang pagdami ng cases ng COVID-19. Bless our government officials. Give them wisdom to manage the situation. May you continue to protect and shield us, O God, and provide jobs sa mga nawala ng trabaho to sustain the needs of their families. Bless our online Sunday worship. Bless Pastor Arnel, our speaker for today. May you give him the wisdom, power to deliver your word and touch every heart of your people na makakapakinig ng yung salita. May you fill us with your love, Lord, the joy, peace, and thank you, O God, at sa iyo po namin binabalikan lahat ng papuri, pagsamba, at pasasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Our passage is found in Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. I thank my God every time I remember you, in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnerships in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completions until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you shares in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affections of Christ Jesus. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of His Word. Have a joyful day to everyone. Mapagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat. Today, we continue our sermon series on finding joy in the midst of fearful times. This is a series study on the book of Philippians. And I entitled this as sermon number two, Great Principles from St. Paul's Prayer to the Philippians, based on Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. But before we proceed, shall we bow our heads and let's commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this great day. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you for another day of blessing, another day of joy. You bless us today, Lord, through your powerful living word. Speak to us, Father, and we would like to open our hearts and we would like to listen to you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Philippians chapter 1, verses uh, 3 to 8. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. And I want you to find for yourselves all the principles that I got from this verse-by-verse -verse study. You know, this letter that Paul writes to the Philippians is the first of the four letters no, from prison that Paul sends out to various churches. He is either in jail or he is in the house arrest, but he is definitely under lock and key in his initial imprisonment in Rome. Paul there writes this letter to Philippians, he writes to Colossians, he writes to Ephesians, he also writes this letter to Philemon. This we call the prison epistle or Pepsi. Philippians, Ephesians, Philemon, and Colossians. Uh, I learned that from Dr. Nari Santos. We know from our uh, previous study no, and reading that God began His work in Europe through the Apostle Paul. No? And this church at Philippi is actually the first church in Europe and we can get so much insight given by the Lord on this letter to Philippians. No? Let's have a little review on this uh, topic, no? on this uh, book. Paul is on death row and awaiting what could happen next, perhaps be the end of his life. And he, and he writes this uh, book on the subject of real and authentic joy that I told you last week in my first message on this series that every chapter is devoted uh, to finding joy in the midst of fearful times or over terrifying times. But Paul has this joy in the Lord despite of his uh, dire situation. The whole church stood with him that strengthens him so much. You know, if there is something about the body of Christ that we should never forget, and that is the church stood with him. No, I really appreciate the believers in Philippi who stood before the man of God, Paul. 
and even in our church no i appreciate those people who have stood with me who, who have stood with me through uh, tough times your support to me okay, okay your love for the lord you pull out together to stand with me despite of the attack of our real enemy satan you know there is a tremendous strength in our midst if we gather together in the lord if we all set ourselves around with jesus christ if we are all working for the same goal filled with the same spirit seeking the same god and you know this will only happen through our partnership and fellowship with the lord you know and fellowship with one another you know during this pandemic days no during this pandemic times during this uh, fearful times during these uh, terrifying times nothing is more inspiring than to know that there are people who would stand with you in spite of the hostile times believing that you are not going through it alone with the believers we the brethren no in Christ are there to be with you and the fellowship of, of the believers are um, are obvious no and this is what we call uh, in in uh, uh, in Greek koinonia it means to hold something in common this will this will hold you something in common i know there we i know that uh, we came from different walks of life and maybe we have nothing in common except our faith in Christ our activities our likes and dislikes our hobbies the way we dress the way we cover ourselves the way the food we eat the music we listen to the movie we watch they could entirely be different or absolutely uh, diverse until we go to church no and then when we go to church we pray together we close our eyes we raise our hands to worship the lord and we look upon jesus we are all looking in the same direction that is what we call fellowship of the believers fellowship no that has been given to us by jesus and jesus is in the middle of that fellowship you know this pandemic days even without physical fellowship or formal gathering no we are separated by distance and yet we are bound together in the spirit and we can powerfully connect through online so all the more that we need to strengthen our digital ministry so proximity is not the issue here no because the heart before the lord is okay the heart before the lord matters and from our passage today we see that the closeness of the believers with a common uh, purpose no is the one that god had used to give paul this tremendous strength in return paul starts this letter of thanksgiving by pointing his affection and his relationship with them and the strength that he found in them and to simplify our text today in verses 1 and 2 uh, he was talking about uh, we gather our, we gathered as a, as the body of christ and here in the prayer of paul in verses 3 to 8 no verses 5 and 6 uh, i have you in my mind and verses 7 to 8 i have you in my heart you know his subject is his relationship with them we are the body i have you in my mind i have you in my heart i have you in my prayer here in philippians he just wanted to write his friends the people whom he loved much he had been in partnership with them they served with him with him no he has uh, this very uh, and he was so very uh, thankful no sobrang mapagpasalamat ito si pablo for their love and for the joy and this letter to Philippians is a friendly letter. It is a personal letter. It is a prime letter. And St. Paul had assured them that they were in Christ while they were in Philippi. At the same time, he was in Rome and he was also in Christ. The Philippians and Paul were both in Christ that made the fellowship possible. And they hold on to that in common. They were in partnership in, in, in the gospel. No, They were in partnership in the fellowship together. So what are the, the, the obvious lessons? from his prayer for the Philippians. And I want to share with you some principles from Paul's affectionate prayer to the Philippians. Let's start in verse 3. No? I thank my God every time I remember you. So, here are our first principle. Be thankful. Paul was thankful. He was thankful. I thank my God every time I remember you. Take note that Paul is writing from a prison cell in Rome. And while he was in the prison cell, he has a lot of time. He has, the, he has a lot of uh, freedom. No? He has the liberty on his hands to write. So he went uh, reminiscing from his large inventory of memories. And the, one of those memories is about the church of Philippi. No? He said, I thank my God every time I remember you. As if he was saying, you put a smile on my face when I think of you remembering you in my prayer. I thank my God every time I remember you. Every time I remember you, every time I pray for you. We know that Paul had gone through a lot of things. So alam na alam natin niya, no? The good, the bad, the hard, the injustices, the wounds, the, the hurts, 
the costly things in Philippi, but he only thinks of the good. No, Very selective. Selective memory. Yung mga magaganda lang. What a great lesson for us. No, Look back at your past. Learn from the good things in the past. Select all the good uh, memories. No, Forget the bad. Hurtful things. Yung mga ganyan. Reminis all the good things. That will be your tool in facing any circumstances today and uncertainties in the future. So he remembers the good memories at Philippi. He remembered the fruit of the people. People were getting saved, no? God was being honored. Lives were being changed. Churches were being planted. And for that, I have joy, sabi ni Pablo. What is he thankful for? Simple. He is thankful for what the gospel produced. Ganun lang po kasimple yun. It produced a life change. People's lives were changed. The church had grown up. The family was extended. And it was all worth of thinking. Every time I remember you. So, si St. Paul didn't think about the bad things or the hard things or the costly things. He only uh, thinks about the good things. He just wants to uh, see Jesus to be glorified and to rejoice with them, with the people, with the, with the church at Philippi. And it was all worth of thinking. And every time I think of you, I'm blessed with you. You know, when GCF's uh, ministry started here at Muntalban, there were only three persons in my mind when I started the ministry. I did not know that the Lord will make it grow. I did not know that the Lord will, uh, uh, will do great things here, great work here at Muntalban. Basta, I just keep on uh, ministering to people, having a Bible study. Every Saturday, I started the Bible study. Then with, uh, with, uh, with Sister Telma Medina and the Norba, si Mami and Sister Ruth and Sister Melody Agiba. Then after one or two years, Pastor Conrad Villaluz, uh, took over. He led the ministry and the ministry group and all GCF North New members who are residing in Muntalban did help and also from there uh, once a month to, uh, to twice a month till it becomes a regular thing. I remember some of the hardship that GCF staff and GCF people no, in Muntalban went through trying to build the church. It was really an amazing time for us. How the Lord worked uh, but uh, but of course uh, it costs a lot of uh, for it costs a lot for everyone no they share their resources their time their house their effort their sacrifice like paul no he remembers those wonderful times no with these uh, people and the joy of which god had done to them he was saying i just can't help but think about you no before myself before my needs before my situations he kept the joy of the lord through circumstances by being other centered than being self centered I thank my God every time I remember you. So be thankful. That's the number one principle. Another principle, the second principle, be prayerful. In verse 4a, notice that in verse 4a, he said, In all my prayers for, for all of you, I always pray with joy. I always pray for you with joy. In other translation, it says, I'm always praying for you. You are always in all my prayer, no? So always praying, not periodic, not intermittent, but having consistent prayer life. You know one thing I learned about the Apostle Paul? Paul prayed a lot in every way. Talagang mapanalanginin siya. Paul was a man of prayer. He said to the to the to the people in uh, Rome in Romans chapter 1 verse 10. I constantly remember you in 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 prayers no, at all times. In second in First Corinthians chapter one verse four, I always thank God for for you every time I pray. In Colossians chapter one verse three, I always thank no when we pray for you. In First Thessalonians chapter one verse two, I always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in in my prayer. In Second Thessalonians chapter one verse three, I ought always to thank God for you all the time. In Second Timothy chapter one verse three. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayer. He prayed constantly. He loves to pray. And I want you to understand that here, St. Paul either exaggerates or he is really a good politician who knows exactly the right thing to say even though he doesn't mean it. Or he is indeed a tremendous man of prayer. Talagang mapanalanginin siya. No? Either or. Because he was... Uh, able to bring everything that he cared about before the Lord with joy. No? Talagang nakaka... 
He was so very, he was a, a very amazing man, no? You know, Paul loved to travel. Alam po natin yan, talagang uh, from his uh, missionary journeys, no? He loved to travel, no? Uh, and, uh, and he preached the gospel. And Satan, for sure, no? Alam na alam natin si Satan. When somebody is doing the ministry, you know, Satan is also very, very active. If you are active, Satan is uh, doubly active, no? And Satan, for sure, wants to put him down and mess with God's word, God's word, no? Several times, no? But he could not. Because Paul was able to pray all the time. Meron talaga rin naman taong ganon. Magaling to put you down. Because they could not surpass what you are doing. So in order to become taller, no, they cut other people's head. They put you down. At meron din naman talaga magaling to mess with God's word. No? Mess up with God's word. With God's, uh, God's word. No? Wala lang. Nandyan lang talaga sila para manggulo at nagawain ng Diyos. No? Si Satan is good at this. To put you down and messing up with God's work, no? And he is good in mobilizing people to do his agenda. But this man, Paul, he is a prayerful man. If you are a prayerful man, nobody can put you down. No one beats a prayerful man. When he kneels down before God and pray, the power of God electrifies his spirit and hearts to be able to withstand any attack. And you could not put a good and prayerful man down because the power of heaven backs him up, no? Yung lesson po natin. Don't put a good and prayerful man down, especially if he is sent by God. Because for sure, it will boomerang to you. Paul did pray a lot. He was not burdened with the cares of the world. In fact, he was in prison and still praying and making requests to God. Paul is praying that God would bless them. But I love the end of verse 4b. I always pray with joy. And this is our third principle. Be prayerful in your, uh, uh, be joyful in your prayer. He prays with joy. He prays with gladness. This church at Philippi has thrilled his heart so much, no? Talagang natitrilled siya, no? He always pray with joy. Indeed, if you are the man of God, learning these things from Philippi, it surely thrills your heart, no? If you see the work of God and their lives are growing in Christ, and this is wonderful, no? Talagang it thrills your heart. Maganda yan yung you are praying with joy. Kesa naman you are always praying with great sadness, with great tears over their sins, with great lukewarmness, with great selfishness, or great division, or great rebellion. No, dapat we pray with great joy. Kaya Paul prayed with great joy. You know the effect of this? He's praying with great joy. And this is the first church in Europe. And you know after the next one or two thousand years, Churches there in Philippi springs forth and grow dramatically. So pray with great joy. Another principles in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, principle in Paul's prayer is in verse five. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, that is our fourth principle. No, be a gospel centered. Focus on the gospel. Let the gospel be the center of your activities. No, Apostle Paul says to them in. Uh, uh, in verse 5, no, uh, he was so very thankful for their partnership and fellowship in the gospel from the very first day to the present. And what is their partnership? They had, number one, they had committed themselves to the gospel. No? Nila sarili to the gospel no? They are gospel-centered. Paul was a gospel-centered person. It was passed down to them. The church has to be a gospel-focused, uh, gospel-centered, or else the gospel becomes a glorified social club, no? And sometimes when we look at our gathering, yung mga fellowship, if we are not aware, no, yung mga couples, mga men, mga and so on and so forth, no. Kaya sometimes um, it becomes a social gathering for, for the sake of gathering, for the sake of uh, eating, for the sake of having an activity, for the sake of activity, no. Magkaroon lang talaga activity, no. Pero hindi naman siya gospel centered, no. So kaya it saddens my heart when I hear from our people, no, yung mga answers will ask some uh, uh, help from from someone no they look up to can you please entertain the and share the and share the gospel to our visitors tawos ang sagot ah, pauwiin mo na lang yan no this is terrible what kind of thinking is this or minsan we just look at some of the fellowship just a gathering lang no parang gathering lang together very horizontal lang activities no pastor nag fellowship kami i'm so very very blessed no pastor we have a big event pastor nakaka-bless ang fellowship talagang bless na bless ako and tano how many how, how many came to know the lord in your activities and what is the result what is the outcome? How many are being saved? How many have changed their lives? Minsan puro horizontal, no? I suggest for our activities that the gospel has to be always be at the center and be part of every as 
and, and it should be the and it should be part of every aspect of the church sa mga discipleship group natin sa mga online fellowship sa mga growth groups natin sa mga small groups natin don't put off the gospel in your group dapat hindi friendship level lang minsan kasi parang nagugro tayo friendship level lang yon train your group to be fishers of men dapat hindi ka nagiging masaya sa ganun lang kapag dumadami kayo at yung mga sumasama naman sa iyo are not converts no hindi naman talaga sila they got saved they, they came to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a very special way they just join you because they came from other churches galing lang yan sa ibang simbahan sabi nga ng isang pastor sa DCES no namimingwit ka ng isda sa ibang aquarium be a gospel focus no train yourself to be fishers of men don't train yourself to be recruiter but fishers of men not fishing from somebody else's aquarium but fisher of men no Paul here remembers the Philippians. He remembers what a gospel-centered time it was. He just thanked God. He just thanked them. He was saying, you are just such a gospel people. Kayo yun, mga taga-Philippi, no? Mga Christians in Philippi, the saints in Philippi, from the moment you believe the gospel, uninterruptedly, until now, you are all about the gospel. You are all about the spreading the gospel. You are all about giving so that the gospel can go forward. You are all about living the gospel. So he says in verse 5, In view of our partnership, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now, and he says in verse 5, In view of your part participation in the gospel, by the word, the word participation in Greek is the word koine or fellowship, no? Uh, it is one of the few that will always ring in our uh, ears, no? The word koinonia. It is translated, no? Most in other versions, in other places, no? Fellowship. And the word here, koinonia, is also used for communion. It means to share something in common with another person. They are partners. And that is the very word that is used here for uh, participation in the gospel. Remember, Jesus calls his disciples to be fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He is calling us. He is inviting us to enter into this grander enterprise in doing God's work. No, We enter into partnership. We are, we are in this together in trying to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you there is no greater business in the world than the business of the gospel. In view of our partnership in the gospel, that means of your fellowship with me and with one another in the gospel what else in is their partnership number two the church had committed themselves to paul no talagang uh, tinalaga they devoted themselves to paul i we devoted ourselves to paul no you know there are some missionaries nakakalungkot po ito who are sent uh, to the field by their churches you know i love to see to see uh, churches sending their missionaries planting churches Kaya nga ang assignment sa atin ng CBAP, no? we plan two churches. No? Every church. It was challenged to us by our general director. No? Sabi niya, GCF North, during our anniversary, GCF Montalban. GCF North Montalban. At least, no, you plan two churches. That's our contribution to the, to the, to the, to the denomination. No? So, for the glory of God. Okay? You know, there are some missionaries who are sent to the field by their churches. With a promise to support them. We will support you. We will pray for you. But they end up getting stuck. No, They're pulling one by one their support. The sending people have lost their vision. Nawala na lang bigla. And there is no communication. And this very terrible experience for the people in the field. Who are in the dark. Waging war with Satan. To bring the gospel to the lost. But you know these Philippian believers no, had set their mind in supporting Paul, materially, spiritually, emotionally. And they had stayed with Paul. The church at Philippi strengthened his hand in the Lord. The Philippians were just one of the handful of Macedonian churches and they were involved in helping him at all. No, They would faithfully help him and throughout his ministry, Paul loved them for their partnership with them or with him rather. Though um, he was uh, many miles away from uh, from these people, you know? look, Paul, he is not a superhero. He is just an ordinary man like you. There is no such thing as super apostle, super pastor, super worker. No, uh, si Paul is not a superhero. He is a, he is just an ordinary man like you and me. No, kagaya lang po natin siya. People say, you know, Paul is different. He is 
this guy is very intellectual this guy is very organized this guy is so courageous you know this guy is so amazing no paul is just like us no the spirit that he has is the same spirit that we have in our hearts in our lives he is indeed amazing because of the love of god's people no kaya siya nagiging great it's because of the love of God to him and his love for the people and the love of God's people. No? Dahil sa pagmamahal na rin ng iglesia ng, ng Philippi sa kanya. The love of the believers in Philippi keeps him strong. And when he prayed, he prayed with joy. And there is a big smile on his face when he wrote verse 5. From the first day until now. Diba? It's because they had been with him in Thessalonica, in Berea, in Athens, no? in a current, now in Rome. Let's continue in verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will continue, uh, will, go, will, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. That leads to our fifth uh, principle. Be confident in what God is doing in verse 6. By the way, the word confident means to be strongly uh, persuaded, no? Paul was deeply fixed with his uh, confidence about what God was doing in, in the life of the, of the Philippians. No? And he said, He who began a good work in you. I just want you to, uh, give, your, uh, to give some uh, careful attention, no? careful thoughts to these words that, that, that he used. No? He began a good work in you. It is God. Okay? Ang Diyos po yun. It is God the Father who was the one who began his, this work. No? It is God who began a good work. It is more than a good work. It is the best work because God is the one who is doing it. No, There's no better work that God ever performs than a miracle of planting churches. Alam niyo po, why, why, we, do, why we disciple? Why we uh, send missionaries? Why we plant churches? Bakit po ba? Why we, why we are doing uh, missionary work? In order to see churches being planted. No, that's the end goal of the mission, to plant a church. Okay? So that one day, in the book of Revelation, all the people, all the nations, all the tribes, from every tongue, from every nation, they will worship the Lord. Okay? Seeing these people in the body of Christ, seeing these people worshiping together, glorifying the Son. So, there's no better work that, uh, better work what, that, that, that God ever performs than a miracle of planting churches, whereby He calls and He regenerates lost souls who are spiritually dead in their sins and makes them alive in Jesus Christ. This is the work that God began in them. Not only that God began this work, Paul was confident that God would perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Notice the next words, will perfect it. It means to bring to full and final completion. God will finish what he, has, what, he, what he has started. God is not interrupted. God does not allow His projects to go unfinished. And God said, He who began this work in them. Paul speaks with confidence to encourage them. I know that God is going to perfect this work in you. He says, until the day of Christ Jesus. The day of Christ Jesus is the end of the age. The day that Jesus comes back. And this is a such beautiful verse. He has this confidence that the Lord is going to finish in you the work that God begins now. And this is the assurance that God never gives up on us. We may give up on Him. We may uh, fail Him. We may uh, fall, no? But He won't fail us. no. We may fail Him, but He won't fail us. God is going to finish what He had started in your life. And God is always involved in our lives. This is a continuing work of God. Alright? So He will complete the works in your life. Jesus is the author. Jesus is the finisher of our faith. And there are no rejects with Him. He finishes what He started. Just be patient, no? God is not yet finished with you. Okay, let's remember that. And finally, so Paul says in verses 7 to 8, It is right for me to feel this way, no? About all of you, since I have you in my heart, 
whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel. All of you share in God's grace with me. In verse 8, God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And here is our sixth and final principle. Be affectionate with God's people. Verses 7 to 8. You are constantly on my mind. You are in my mind. You are in my heart. I have, I have this confidence, no? He was very, very positive. He was very, very optimistic, no? Because the church is supporting him. Because the church is uh, bold standing with him. The church is bold strengthening him. Because uh, uh, while, while he was away, no? Uh, while he was being persecuted. While he was being uh, falsely accused, no? While all his fair weather friends are gone, they stood with him no matter what. Sabi sa verse 7, Whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. You know, the church at Philippi, the Philippian believers are partaking of God's grace by enduring with Him in His change and even in His defense. As Paul made a defense, no? They stuck with Him through thick and thin. And they stood with Him through fires, even in His defense, even in the proclamation of the gospel. Whatever the decision Rome would make on His, on his case, no? The Philippian believers would stick with him. You know, the, these Philippians were in fact exposing themselves to great terror, no? Pero hindi sila tatakot. If Paul lose, loses, no? They lose. Or these people lose, no? And uh, Paul made this case, no? They were waiting for a decision. So Paul just, say, just uh, uh, says in verse 8, God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. God can testify. God is my witness. God knows how I feel. God knows how greatly I long for you with affection of Jesus, no? With affection of Christ. You know, these words brought him back from lots of good memories. Paul left the affection. Uh, rather, he, 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 he felt the affections. Rather, sorry. He missed them terribly, no? He loved these people with all of, the, of his hearts, no? And uh, their love for Paul had kept him strong. And Paul is so proud of that. They love like Jesus, no? He says, I'm just praying that uh, your love continues to be wiser as you grow. Kasi may mga taong, because of their wrong management of love, they become blind from the truth. They just follow the ways of their hearts and they become full. Kaya ang prayer is, Kaya ang prayer niya, the prayer is for your love to continue to be wiser as you grow. I'm so thankful for your love. I'm so thankful for your help. I have you in my mind. I have you in my heart. I have you in my prayers. Remember, we are on this together before, before until now. No, I pray that you will continue to be more loving and to be more stronger to the very end. Ganyan din po yung panalangin ko sa inyo. And to summarize the principles that uh, we got uh, lessons from Paul's prayer, be thankful, be prayerful, be joyful in your prayer, be a gospel-centered, be confident with what God is doing, be affectionate with God's people. You know, because this is what God wants us to do, this is our confidence in Him. Live a great life. Live a joyful life. Be thankful. Be prayerful. Jesus wants us to always pray. God wants us to, to, uh, to listen to our prayers. No? God answers our prayer. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never tires of hearing our prayer. Remember that God works in ways we can't see. Be loving. Be affectionate. Let God be your priority. Allow the gospel to be the center of your activities. Allow Jesus to be the center of your life. Amen? As we close, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you for what we have learned and so in this church at Philippi that so thrilled St. Paul so much. And Lord, we begin with the fact that we are one body. And so often, it seems like the enemy's greatest tool is to divide. To have people choose sides and to choose people to stand with. The opinions that fly around and there was very little love, but just lots of talk. And yet we know 
that there is no strength in that, but just produce division. But yet, Lord, when your love is found in our hearts, when we love one another, when we see the common in us, and that is we have one and the same Savior, we have one, the same God, who binds us in love through the blood of His Son, Jesus. May we always pray for one another. May we be aware of the needs of our brethren. May we practice care for others. Let the Philippian uh, church be our mirror. They are very much interested with others. They are interested with, with the suffering of Paul in the prison cell in Rome. We pray and imbibe Paul's great joy in having such a strong fellowship and partnership with the believers. Father, do that in our midst. We pray that you may be seen in our life, that they can see Jesus in, our, in us, O Lord. And I pray that those who are weak will find strength in you and will find strength in our fellowship. Father, empower us, build us, build the church, and not to destroy it, Father. Use us mightily to minister to the brethren, especially those who are suffering, those who are discouraged, those who are lost in their hope, those who are fearful, especially during this pandemic. We glorify you today in our midst and we ask all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. God bless you at mabuhay po kayong lahat. When you've prayed every prayer that you know how to pray Just remember the Lord will hear And the answer is on its way Our God is able He is mighty He is faithful And He never sleeps he never slumbers, He never tires of hearing our prayer When we are weak, He becomes stronger So rest in His love and cast all of your cares on Him Do you feel that the Lord has forgotten your need? Just remember that God is always working in ways you cannot see. Our God is able, He is mighty, He is faithful, and He never sleeps. He never slumbers, He never tires of hearing our prayer. When we are weak, He becomes stronger. So rest in His love and cast all of your cares on Him. And He never sleeps, He never slumbers, he never tires of hearing our prayer When we are weak, He becomes stronger So rest in His love and cast all of your cares on Him
So rest in His love and cast all of your cares. So rest in His love and cast all of your cares. So rest in His love and cast all of your cares on Him.